The American justice system may not be perfect, but there are people out there to make it better every single day. So in a new book, Her Honor, LaDoris Hazard Cordell pulls back the curtain on what it's like to be a judge, especially as a black woman. The first chapter of the book is called Bitten by the Judge Bug, and it tells the story of how judging came to be a part of my life and an important part of my life. But just to kind of summarize, I grew up on the East Coast, just outside of Philadelphia. I'm the middle of two sisters, and my parents were working class folks, and I went to public schools. My sisters and I were the first in our family to go to college, and my parents, like, that was just a given. So I got off to college, and I start off as a major in Spanish. Yo puedo hablar español, and yo la viví en la Universidad de Guanajuato in Mexico. I studied there for wow. a bit. Then I decided to change my major and go into theater. So I finally ended up graduating as a theater major from Antioch College. Then it was a decision wow. about what to do with my life. What, and I wanted to be independent and be able to support myself. So I kind of ruled things out. I was not particularly good in math or in the sciences. So you kind of look at what's left and I was left with the law. So uh, with that and never, never in my mind about being a judge, never. Uh, there no one in my family had ever been in the law, uh, lawyer, no less a judge. So I go off to law school and I went to Stanford here in California where I was the only uh, black woman in my class. Wow. And this was in the early 1970s. Um, I finish and then I go into private practice. While I was practicing law, I appeared in front of judges, none of whom looked like me. So they were usually white males. Um, mm -hmm. And oftentimes I found them to be, some to be condescending, to be disrespectful, to be racist. Mm -hmm. And I always thought, wow, if I ever had a chance to be on a bench and wear a robe, I would never be disrespectful of anyone. And that was just kind of it. And then as I describe in the book, something happened. I got a phone call, which led to something. And, and I, I don't want to give it away other than to say the reason I got into judging was because of hair. Hair. Okay, and that is a good that's team. That's the teaser. It's that is a good chapter. teaser. And that is how I got bitten by the judge bug because of hair. So I'll leave it at that and say that at the age of 32, I went onto the bench. I was one of the youngest judges. This is in California, a state trial judge. Wow. And uh, my career lasted for just about 20 years uh, being a trial court judge. And that's what the book is about. It's about my, my life and my life on the bench and how people in my court and decisions I made affected them, but also affected me. Yeah. What right. inspired you to write it? During the last seven or eight years of my time on the bench, and I don't know why, I started writing letters to my parents. And I'm talking letters, not emails, letters. Every Friday, because Friday afternoons tended to be a lighter time if you're a trial court judge, because you're kind of planning for what's going to happen the following week. Yeah. And I wrote about everything that happened that week, very personally, how it affected me and just what all these cases were fine. I go back East and my mother goes to this. She's very organized closet and she pulls out a box and she said, what do you want me to do with all these letters? And I'm like, what? She had saved every letter. So I boxed them up, sent them back here to me. And I think it took me a couple of years before I decided to read them. And I was just stunned by how many cases I had presided over and how much I didn't recall, but for those letters. So wow. those are really the core for what gave me the idea to write about my experience. So that's one reason. The other reason is that, and maybe this has happened to you, it's election time and there's maybe a judge or two on the ballot. I would get phone calls from people the night before. Ah, oh, there's this person who's running for judge. Uh, do you know who it is or what kind of, so it's kind of last minute over the phone. And yeah. I'm thinking, why don't people know about judges of what, and, and they we're important. So the reason I say we're important, there are, consider this, there are nine justices on the US Supreme Court and they hear about 80 new cases a year. There are about 30,000 state trial court judges who hear 80 million new cases a year. Everything that affects our lives, everyone's lives are handled by these 30,000 the people in black robes, right, your trial court judges. I really wanna give someone just a peek inside your book. What is one of the uh, the cases that seem to have affected you most? There's no 
any one case that sticks out because I talk about a lot of different cases. Right. The adoption that I had to undo. Um, I talk about weddings I perform where the couple didn't want the word love to ever be mentioned in a wedding ceremony. I look, I love the expression on your face. It's great. And then they're the serious ones. They're serious where I had to give life sentences to people. And I, I did not support the three strikes law in California, which was the harshest of all of the states. And thanks to Judge Cordell for that fascinating look inside chambers.